So today, uh, Dr. Crow and I are going to wrap up with our joint-specific talks, uh, talking about elbow, wrist, basal joint of the thumb, and uh, small joint of the hand replacements. So we'll start talking about elbow replacement surgery. So one general theme that I'd like to echo that some of the other docs have mentioned is that while hip, knee, and shoulder replacements have excellent outcomes and are time-tested, uh, some of the other joint replacements that we do have more limited indications and patient selection is crucial. So today I'm going to talk about different types of elbow arthritis, the, the history of the total elbow replacement and advances that have occurred over the last 40 years or so, indications for total elbow uh, replacement surgery, outcomes, and we'll talk about a case. So there, there are various different kinds of elbow arthritis. The most common elbow arthritis is post-traumatic arthritis. Now. Uh, this is an arthritis after a fracture or after a dislocation of the elbow. The primary complaint in patients is stiffness. It's rare, rarely painful except at the endpoints of motion, and it's characterized by contractures and extra bone that forms. Rheumatoid arthritis is another type of arthritis that we commonly treat. In uh, patients that develop rheumatoid arthritis, within five years, almost half of them develop uh, arthritis in the elbow. And in contrast to post-traumatic arthritis, this is a painful arthritis throughout the arc of motion. Fortunately, advances in medicine and disease-modifying uh, agents have made advanced rheumatic uh, arthritic disease uncommon. Primary osteoarthritis is extremely rare in contrast to hip and knee arthritis. In uh, primary osteoarthritis, you have a relative preservation of cartilage with bone spurs and tightness of the soft tissues that form. And we typically see this in manual laborers and weightlifters and throwing athletes. And these are all totally different animals and must be treated differently. There are other rare causes of elbow arthritis, which include infection, crystalline arthropathies such as gout, and hemophilia. So what are the treatment options? Just like everything else in uh, treating joint uh, disease, we have anti-inflammatory medications, disease, um, activity modification, cortisone shots, and other uh, injections can be quite effective, therapy and splinting, and specifically for rheumatoid arthritis, the DMARDs uh, actually reduce synovitis and dramatically decrease the symptomatic disease. But when a patient finally is symptomatic enough and wants something to be done operatively, there are several options, and these depend largely on the patient age, the etiology, and the functional demands of the patient. So for instance, Arthroscopy of the elbow has totally changed the way we treat elbow arthritis. In mild rheumatoid arthritis and now post-traumatic and osteoarthritis, this is an excellent option to treat the stiff elbow, which is minimally painful, just painful at the ends of motion, and we can avoid joint replacement surgery in this patient population. Uh, there are various partial elbow replacements, which we'll talk about, and soft tissue interposition replacements, but the total elbow replacement really historically has been indicated in patients with severe arthritis in uh, rheumatoid patients or older lower demand uh, patients that have osteoarthritis or post-traumatic arthritis. And lastly, joint fusion is an option, but it's not a great option. Now why is it not a great option? So the elbow is basically the joint that positions the hand in space along with the shoulder. It allows you to eat, to perform hygiene, uh, and just activities of daily living. And we know that from studies done by various investigators, including Dr. Mori, that the functional range of motion to do most activities, so you need at least um, 30 degrees short of full extension to 130 degrees of flexion and about a 100 degree arc of rotation of the forearm. Uh, and elbow fusion prevents this. And uh, it's a great option for pain, but it's not a good functional option. So what historically has been done in the field of el elbow replacement. Well, the first surgical treatment, uh, the elbow joint was actually resected and soft tissue was interposed in the elbow joint, which was um, done for severe post-traumatic deformity, trauma, and rheumatoid patients. This uh, was not a great option. People began first doing partial elbow replacements in 1947, and uh, while it was an interesting idea, the results were unpredictable for pain relief loosening of the implants occurred, and instability was common. In 1970s, um, Dr. Mori and other colleagues at the Mayo Clinic started doing the first simple hinge prostheses, 
and these were uh, cemented, which improved the outcomes. And from the early experience um, during this uh, early period, there were three design concepts that emerged, linked total elbow replacements, unlinked, and convertible prostheses. So we'll talk about these a bit. So linked or semi-constrained prostheses, this is uh, the design of the mo still the most commonly used total elbow today, the Kunrad Mori uh, total elbow, allows, basically links the two components, the humeral stem, which you can see up here, and the ulnar stem by uh, literally a mechanical link. So the advantage, as you can imagine, is that dislocation is not going to occur, or it's very difficult to occur without catastrophic failure. So instability is not a problem, dislocation is not a problem, but the linkage actually puts some stress at the bone uh, cement interface, which can lead to long-term loosening. Because of this, built into these prostheses, a little bit of play, there's a little bit of wiggle, about six to eight degrees, and that's uh, felt to allow the soft tissues to absorb some of these stresses and it's had some success. Other designers have created unlinked designs to sort of get around the problem of the, the increased stress at the bone cement interfaces. And uh, various designs have been uh, created, and they have no linkage between the, the humeral component and the ulnar component. So the, the, the pros are that there are less stress on the actual components. You can maintain more bone stock, and there's decreased polyethylene wear, but as you may imagine, because the two components aren't connected, dislocation of the elbow can occur. And it cannot be used in various settings, especially unstable joints, neuropathic joints, or uh, joints where there's a lot of bone loss. And the m some of the most recently designed prostheses are what's called convertible designs. So they basically allow for conversion of an unlinked prosthesis to a linked prosthesis. And they give us um, a number of options which can be quite useful. They allow us to preserve some of the soft tissue attachments, including the collateral ligaments, and they can later be converted or intraoperatively intra be converted to a link design if there's some problem with stability of the elbow. So what are the indications for a total elbow replacement? So historically there were very narrow indications. Basically end-stage uh, rheumatic rheumatoid arthritis uh, in a very symptomatic patient, and we treated younger patients who were low demand in this age group, and they did fairly well. And then uh, patients with post-traumatic arthritis or osteoarthritis who were lower demand and older, where we didn't have to worry about the prosthesis eventually failing sometime down the line. In the past 10 years or so, the indications have really evolved, and we're finding that there are some good groups that uh, may benefit from elbow replacement. I think the, the number one indication today that's uh, sort of evolved in the past 10 years is elderly patients with a smashed elbow with a comminuted distal humerus uh, fracture. We found that many of these patients where we can't put the bone back together, and we can't perform an open reduction in internal fixation, they will do better with an elbow replacement. This has been supported by the literature. Another group um, which has been investigated is patients who have had um, a distal humerus fracture, an elbow fracture, that has been treated either operatively or non-operatively and has not healed, total elbow replacement has been attempted. And this group has done uh, <coughs> not quite as well as the, uh, the di comminuted distal uh, humerus uh, population in the elderly. At about um, 10 to 15 years, there's about a 65% survival rate of the prosthesis. And if you talk to our hip and knee replacement colleagues, they would say, oh, that's a, that's a completely unacceptable result for a hip or a knee, but in some complicated situations in the elbow, this is something worth considering. And then lastly, partial elbow replacements have been tried in trauma in younger patients as a way to uh, alleviate their symptoms short of uh, performing a bigger operation, a total elbow replacement. So the main problem with total elbow is you cannot put a lot of stress on them. Manu this is not a good operation for people who are manual laborers. We tell patients that um, you cannot lift more than about 10 pounds. This is not a hard and fast rule, but the more stress you put on the components, the more likely they are to fail with time. Also, as with any other joint, um, a prior infection, or particularly in the elbow, uh, neurologic disease is a contraindication for total elbow arthroplasty. Complications have been uh, seen uh, with total elbows, and historically, complication rates have been very high, but fortunately we've figured out some things to 
improve the, on the complication rate, and particularly patient selection. Finding uh, the right patient is uh, crucial to avoid postoperative complications. So complications that have been seen and reported in the literature, infection, it can, anywhere from 2 to 11 percent, loosening of the components is probably the greatest uh, problem that surgeons worry about, and about at about 10 years there's somewhere in the range of a 15 to 20 percent loosening rate, and usually the ulnar component is what fails. Uh, periprosthetic fracture can be seen and other problems like instability, failure of the triceps to extend the elbow, and problems with the ulnar nerve around the elbow. There was a pretty recent interesting study that looked at all of the total elbows that have been done in the state of California over about a 10-year period. This was over 16,000 total elbows. And they found within 90 days of surgery, there was about a 10% rate of early complications, 8% rate of uh, reoperation that was needed, and 5% needed a, a revision within the first three months. So again, this is not an operation for everyone. The, uh, let's talk about some of the outcomes. So the results vary dramatically based on the indication. Uh, today in 2012, this is still an excellent um, option for patients with RA or other types of inflammatory arthritis, particularly lower demand patients. So uh, a study was done in 2005 that showed in this population, there's about an 85% to 93% five-year survival with the traditional Kunrad Mori elbow as well as a couple other implants. This study found no difference uh, between the implants and patients uh, had a high satisfaction and decreased risk of dislocation, specifically in the population greater than 65 years. This is also, in my opinion, and this is um, supported by the literature, a good option for patients, again, with the smashed distal humerus fracture in the elderly. Um, so multiple series have looked at this over the past 10 years, and this is a reliable surgery with good to excellent um, elbow functional outcomes and about 85 to 95 percent uh, survival uh, series after s uh, three to seven year follow-up. So the results in fractures that don't heal in distal humerus non-unions, they are not as good. I don't think this is a, a reasonable option for most patients, but, but it, is something that it is something to consider. So a, uh, numerous studies have found high rates of complications in this population, including loosening of the actual components and problems with the ulnar nerve around the elbow, up to 50% rate in this population. And then lastly, a um, couple populations that I don't think are worth considering. Young patients should not be considered for a total elbow replacement. These are patients who put too much stress on the components. They will not... Um, you know, outlive their implant, and the revisions for these can be quite challenging. So um, Dr. Mori and Dr. Seeley studied a group of 55 patients that were a mean age of 33 and um, had either post-traumatic or inflammatory arthritis treated with a total elbow. While they had good functional results, the revision rates were at 22 percent at seven and a half years. Lastly, this is not really an option for patients with primary OA of the elbow. This is a population where um, arthroscopic treatments and other treatments may be better. Data is emerging on partial elbow replacements as well. A study out of the Mayo Clinic in 2008, a small series, reported three patients who underwent radiocapitellar hemiarthroplasty. So this is part of the elbow, the radial head, and part of the end of the humerus, the capitellum, that was replaced. And the benefit is that in a patient that just has damage to that part of the joint, you can preserve the undiseased joint. Uh, the there's still not enough data to make conclusions, but in that series, two patients did fairly well while one required a revision. More recent data by Weber and colleagues uh, reported on 11 patients, and there were reasonable results. Range of motion was good, um, and there were no complications in early follow-up. But I think the uh, data is not long-term enough to make uh, solid recommendations. Here's just a recent case of what I think is a, a good indication for total elbow replacement. This was a 68-year-old right-hand dominant woman who unfortunately fell, injured her left elbow, and had a, a smashed, comminuted, di very distal, distal humerus fracture. You can see uh, the end of the humerus is in multiple pieces, and actually she also broke part of the uh, ulna. So this is a situation where ideally you want to try to piece back the bones, perform an open reduction in internal fixation, but it's not always possible. We obtained a CT scan, again revealing 
the multiple fragments and the high uh, level of comminution of the bone. And we ultimately elected to do a, a total elbow replacement. And uh, in the low demand elderly patient, this is a, a good option. And this patient has done quite well so far. So in summary, the benefits of total elbow arthroplasty or elbow replacement in general are that it provides predictable and excellent restoration of motion and predictably uh, eliminates pain. The drawbacks are that there is a high complication rate. Loosening of these components can occur, particularly in younger, more active patients. And the need to revise these uh, can provide challenges. There is a 10-pound maximum and a 2-pound repetitive weight restriction, which is unacceptable for many patients. In the future, as we continue to refine patient selection, I think we may find better roles for elbow replacement surgery and perhaps an expanding role for partial elbow replacement. Thank you.